So, uh, hello once again. I'm uh, very glad to see you, those lovely smiley faces that you are all very, in very good mood, yeah? So, Dragon just starting with the defense topic, yeah? And now I will definitely kill you with this topic, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I will get your attention with this topic, yeah? yeah. But I will very be glad if you're gonna be like a TV set, you know, TV, telev te 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 televisor. So you have picture but no sound, huh? Yeah. This is uh, how am I at my home. When my wife is next to me, I have only picture, no sound. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what about defense and the topic technical and tactical development trends? Yeah. I think, I don't know how it goes in Poland. But I think that for every one of you, it's very important that you know what are the development trends of our sport worldwide. Because on the daily business you are working on some development. But I think for all of you it's very important to know are you in good direction or are you in wrong direction. <coughs> and if you are in good, if you are in the wrong direction, <coughs> there is no application. Google Map can't uh, help you. <coughs> so the second very important thing for all of you, <coughs> it's the good number of you is working for the future of your sport. So probably you will see your result after the season, after two seasons, three seasons, probably after ten years. Uh, if you are right now in the wrong direction, imagine what will be tomorrow, after tomorrow, in ten years. So no more philosophy. Let's start to go on the straight to the topic. Yeah. <coughs> So defending comes from the verb, uh, the defense comes from the verb defending, yeah. But I don't know what is your understanding. Are we in the defense really defending or we are doing something else? But I hope that we will come to this answer during this presentation. So, let's see here what the top coaches are saying, probably not only in our sport. There is a lot of similarities in between uh, handball and the other team sports, you know very well. And I learned also when I was a student of the faculty that we have to also uh, we have to observe not only the development of our sport, we have to observe also being informed about the development of the other similar sports, like basketball, for example. So what is the coach's uh, opinion? So probably for you also, you can also read. So for some of the coaches, they say it is the season fact or the phase of the game for winning games. Good number of the coaches focuses more or emphasizes more importance of the game in defense than in the attack. Some of the coaches are saying that it is a main tactical tool to expose opponent under the tactical pressure. Some of them are saying this is the main precondition for successful fast break and late in order for the attack as well. 
Część, część mówi, że jest to warunek konieczny do, do, do wygrywania meczu. And some of them are saying we are analyzing the opponents and building up the system in defense that doesn't fit well to them. I część mówi, że buduje system w defensywie w zależności od tego, co jak, jak, po analizie gry ofensywnej przeciwnika, tak żeby nie mówić to. So what does it mean in the normal words? So first, w normalnych słowach co to oznacza? We are trying to play the defense to attack probably the main spots of the attack. And we don't let them play their own game. They have to fit to our positioning, to our direction. So we are the ones who are the bosses, it's not them. That is how we make the pressure on the attack on the opponent team, yeah? That is how we gain the superiority, general superiority in the terms of, uh, of playing against each other. After making pressure, after playing defense with the success, then this advantage, this superiority we are trying to gain through the fast break to score easy goals, or through the very successful beating up the successful set playing the attack, positional attack. And that's how we came to the another expression as some of the coaches are really saying that, that attack is winning the games. But, but, the, but the defense is uh, winning the trophies. In order to confirm this theory, I always being reminded, it was, I forgot it was, I'm bad with the ages, so Carolina knows that I, I'm bad in the orientation. So uh, it was in 2018. So there was the final four for the women, today is for the men. Our colleague uh, Ambrose Martin was the coach of Jer, the team which final, finally won this uh, final game and the trophy in the dying seconds in the last moments of the match. And what was very, very particular for, for his uh, performance, whenever he was taking team time out, and you know that usually the coaches are speaking about the attack at that moment because the team's in the attack. He was all the time using the, the team, uh, uh, the, the timeout in order to remind his players about their roles in the defense, what they have to do the defense in order to obstruct the game of the opponent. So, in the normal definition you will see that the defending is protecting the goal for the opponent. This is the normal definition. Some of the definitions is saying that the, the, we are atta attacking the player with the ball or we are at attacking the ball. Make a pressure on the ball. But as you know, we are not making only pressure on the ball side, we are also very often making the pressure on the so-called helping side or opposite side of the ball position. So I come back to the, the first question. Are we really defending or probably we are attacking the opponent? So who is going to make the first activity? So nowadays it's old fashioned, let's say that if the defense is reacting on the activities of the of the of, of the attacking team it's old fashion więc jeżeli reagujemy na aktywność zawodników to gramy w sposób taki 
Now the, 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 the defenses are so much active, and you will see later on the, on, the, on the videos, that the first step is made by the defense, and we are trying to convince the players that bo having ball in the possession is a problem with them. So do not forget if anyone is playing chess. So the the first uh, uh, in the chess, uh, the statistic says that around 60% is winning by the white uh, uh, pieces. So the one who starts playing first. <coughs> so when we are play, speaking about the ratio between two phases, they are connected. So we have defense on one side and then we have attack on the other side. So without good defending, we don't have a good attacking. Because we are building up every single attack, doesn't matter is it fast break or set play attack, from the good defending. So this is foundation for the attacking well. Yeah, so yes, that's right that we are very often emphasizing more uh, play in the defense uh, uh, in order to achieve certain results. So they have to be in good balance. Although that sometimes we focus more on the attack. What is the problem very often? that the play in the attack is more attractive, not only for the players. Also for the, uh, for the spectators as well. Everybody is speaking about the actions, attractiveness of the actions in the attack. Nobody is speaking about the attractiveness of the game in the defense. The players, they also like to play more attack. Sometimes it's very hard to motivate them to play in the defense. Because with those proactive defending, you have to make them believe that def the, the defense is not the place where they're taking rest. They have to sweat a lot in defense in order to gain the ball. I can give you my personal example. I each Tuesday and Friday I'm playing basketball with my friends. I enjoy very much when I'm scoring. Especially if my points are deciding the games. I go home with such a smile. Until I don't meet my wife at home. But to play in defense, it's hard, I have to admit. Especially if I have to, the direct opponent, I'm not allowed to move. Sorry. Especially if I have to take care of the opponent who is 20 years younger than me. Sometimes mission impossible. They have to use uh, uh, handball skills. So what we say when you are working with your players on the attack? You are more coaching them. You are more coaching them, conducting them, leading them. But when you are training with them defense, then you are more psychologist. You have to find a, you have to find a way how to motivate them to be really very very active in the defense. Yeah, uh, it is normal that you spend more time by training attack. 
It's because you need much more time for training well to attack, yeah? But what you have to make as an understanding that, that the importance for the success should be equal, both in defense and both in attack. So, in order to keep players highly motivated, and to emphasize the importance of the playing in defense, Coaches are very often uh, emphasizing or mentioning different facts of success. Huh? So what is very important for the success in defense is to have the permanent development of individual skills. And this process never ends. With the senior players, you are working also on technical and tactical skills. I never heard any kind of athlete who is going to Olympic Games that he said before Olympic Games, during the preparations, now I have trained enough for the medal, I don't have next 20 days, I don't have to train. So not only technical, tactical skills, also physical skills, which are very, very important component, and psychological as well. What the coaches are also emphasizing is about building up players' mentality for playing in defense. This is what I told. So you are not here to take rest, you have to work really, really, really hard. So who do we need for the successful defense? Do we need those who have uh, technical skills very well, stances, everything works, uh, looks perfectly? Or those who are probably not having such a high, high level of technical skills, but are real pit bulls, competitors? So this you have the, those who are best during the competition and you have those who are very good during the training sessions. In track and field we have that in track and field we have those athletes who were scoring the world best results during the training sessions, but not on the biggest competitions. So if you want to be successful, you have to count on those who are competitors. So very often we are speaking about the low, low defense, defend, defensive position. You can't be successful if we are standing like this in the defense. You have to be in this position. It's not also about the starting mobility. From this position you have better starting mobility. You have ha from this position you have a larger stance. You can probably cover larger space. It's also about the body language. So I'm challenged the opponent. I'm ready. This is information to he attack me. I'm not covering anything. And also what is very important, it's what I mentioned already, activity. Yeah. What we are mentioning very, very often is aggressiveness. But this aggressiveness has to be controlled. If it is not controlled, then more damage than, uh, than gain. So who is controlling it? Brain. And the last but probably not the least, we need in the defense very good communication. So all those zones that we are covering, they are connected. We need collaboration and communication in between the players. You know very well, there is verbal and there is non-verbal communication. So those verbal has to be brief, short, has to be clear and 
what we are forgetting very often, it has to be encouraging. While playing in defense, we don't have uh, so much space to speak, to have long speeches as I'm doing now. Do not forget the importance of the non-verbal uh, communication, so-called body language. You will see very often that the players are recognizing the activities of their, the, their teammates who are playing next to them and due to their positioning they know what to do. This is also body, this is also communication. So now a little bit about development trends. Huh? Just to impress you. So, what you can see, this is the data from the uh, World Championships for the women. And uh, the same trend is with the, with the men, don't worry. So, we permanently have the positive trend. The permanently is improving the effectiveness of the shooting. And with those analyzes, you can also predict the future. Yeah. So we predicted that in the next 2017, that uh, the, the trend is 1% more, it will be 61. And it was around 61, the effectiveness of all the team uh, during the championship 2017. <laughs> But uh, what is more important for, for you probably is to know what the best teams are doing. So the first four teams, they are having the, for the last competitions, two competitions, 2021 and 2019, they have uh, in average four teams, first four teams, 65% of the of, uh, efi efficiency of the shot. Men, I'm sorry. So men's team even more, around 67. So this is about efficiency of the players in the attack, of shooting, yeah. But attack and defense, they are connected, yeah. But what is very interesting, that from 2009, and this is still the trend, that the number of the scored, scored goals how many goals they are scoring has dropped significantly, significantly going down. And we are speaking about the fast-paced handball. Everything is faster. Number of the conceded goals, how many goals we are receiving in our goal also has dropped. Also, the number of the attacks, how many attacks we have during the match, also have been reduced. And from the other side, shooting efficiency is improving. What do you think? What is the reason? Do you have anything on your mind? It's not easy to think and to, to, to sit and think, yeah? Only sitting is easier. Anything? My friend from Serbia, you see? That's why you are so successful. You spend a lot of time in Serbia. So, because the teams are more focusing on the defense nowadays. Defense has improved. And look how is it connected. So individual defense also has improved a lot. Because in every single attack ends mostly with individual act action or probably two players in collaboration. Each attack. Skuteczność jakość tej współpracy 
się podniosła, dlatego mniej bramek zdobywanych. And from the other side, that the teams in the attack are respecting it more. So they are shooting from the well-prepared actions. They are not shooting whenever they like. No i z drugiej strony atakujący też muszą stosować taką obronę. Bardziej skupiają się na tym, jak tę obronę rozbić i wypracowują lepsze pozycje. Just to confirm this, so the key elements of the team's success was the defense. And let's see why. Jeżeli wyznaczymy kluczowy element when you see those results, you will understand that the defense was the critical factor for reaching final stages of the competitions. One of those uh, teams on the very last competition, women's, so among seven teams which were more efficient in defending. Among the seven most efficient teams in defense on this last competition. From seven teams, six of them reached quarterfinal. From those seven teams, two of them reached semifinals. And one team from those seven was in the finals. So, really, defense is winning the trophies. As we are running over the time, I will just go through this very, very fast. You don't have to translate this. So, top teams, you know very well that they are using mostly 6-0 defense. But it's not really like at the time when you were playing. It's a little bit changed. It's more proactive. We call this flexible 6-0 defense. When you have one part of the defense which goes very, very deeply towards the players in the attack, sometimes towards the players without the ball in the possession. And very few teams in the world are playing 5-1 or 3-3, mostly non-European teams. There is, there is really this growing trend of this active defending, especially on wings position and on the opposite side of the ball. We call it helping side. So what is the main goal of this proactive or this uh, uh, flexible defense 6-0? Uh, so to put as much pressure as possible to the opponent with or without the ball, yeah? So when very often when we are attacking the player without the ball and attacking the passing line, this player in the attack can't keep his own initial position. He has to leave this position, yeah? And by leaving this position, he has to change his initial plan. So we are destroying his game. Very often he doesn't get ball in possession. If he doesn't get the ball, the uh, this other player has to probably attack the, the zone with bouncing. This is the most weakest moment for him. And if <laughs> you, he doesn't have economy. Uh, I, I have, he has more words, he's using more words than me. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, and if you cut one part of the attack, then you have the density, bigger density in the other part of the defense. You have some teams which are always using this kind of system, and you have also some teams which are using this system only in a certain part of the games, but let's see how it works. Okay, so now I will just give you certain examples for this kind of game that you will see. Uh, ah, that's it, I know Polish. So, this is uh, how Swedish team is playing. Look how deep they are in the middle. 
and depending on the ball position, they are making any kind of transformation. And you will now check what is, how it is looking like. So the all four are quite deep. Now you will see the player attacking the ball, this player attacking the player without the ball. And forcing the team in the attack in order to commit a mistake. I don't know how was it here, but in my country, in other countries, in order to uh, evaluate the the success of the of the defense in statistics, they were always putting how many fouls you made. But with this kind of game, can we really evaluate the success of the of of the defense with the fouls? No. So you always put the player in the attack under the pressure. And it's a big doubt as well. Doubt. So if I am player with the, in the attack and trying to attack uh, the, the defense, yeah, I want to pass the ball to the right back. But the passing like under the danger. I am always doubting, should I shoot or should I pass? And this is destroying my tactical plans. So thanks to, thanks to my friend and colleague Zolta Marcinka who made this, uh, this uh, layout. So this it, this is the same situation what we saw, but in the drawing. So if you see, the initially we had the four players who were playing deep and two players who were playing flat. So we had at least the six-zero difference in the, let's say two two rows. Then we had another formation of the same defense. Two flat, three players in the second line, and one player deep who was tackling. Then we had the completely another situation where we had the four players who were flat making density towards the line player. If you see on the middle back, we have attack against the play, against the ball. But if you say you see on the right side, there was attack against the passing line. So right side is not active anymore of the attack. So then we had the five-one formation, five flat, and this one still staying deep. And in the ending phase of the attack, where they were in the attack, we had a full flat defense 6 0. Okay, let's see now. If you see initial position here, we have the ball on the middle back, but we have two players who are playing deep, and all the others are playing flat. Especially, this is the CZ effect where the line player is. So, where is the line player? This is flat. Oops. Why it doesn't? Okay. So now you will see the action. High activity, you see. So initially, two players deep towards the left back and the middle back. One stays with the line player, those two still deep. One is staying flat, as you see. And depending on the ball position, initial formation changed a lot. And 
And if you are present on the match, you will see that those players and defense are not speaking too much. They are recognizing the positioning with the body language they are communicating and they know exactly what to do and when. So all the develop, development trends, what we saw that the men are doing, the women are doing as well. Just to confirm, let's see what the ladies are doing. So the Spanish team is in the defense. Now you have a sound, huh? No foul. You will see this also in the slow mo. Look now the, the first play in the defense against the wing. So pressing, no getting the ball. And now look, when the player on the middle back now is getting the ball, she can't pass to the left back. So one whole side is not playing. So now she is far away from the goal. She's not uh, endangering the goal. And now when she's endangering the goal, the defense gets more, more flat. Okay. But what is the biggest problem that you are facing as a coaches? Excellence in sport is when everything goes smooth. When we are watching your play, the game uh, team performing, that everything looks simple. But in order to come to this stage, this is the excellence. This is the moment when we recognize, we say, oh, well, everybody can do it. I can do it also with this team. But in order to get into the, this stage, you need a lot of, lot of time. And this is when the other coaches are trying to kill your, your legs. They say, oh, yeah, I, I'm better than him, I can do it the same, or just kick him out from the club. This is why one basketball coach, when I was watching, he was leading the team, but when he's leading the team, you know, he's always sitting on the bench, on the chair. And whenever he was instructing the team, he wanted to say something. He was walking with the chair like this. I said, what are you doing? He said, I won't let the other coaches to sit in my chair. So, in order to play such a good defense, this flexible, it's very risky. Don't go home and start tomorrow playing this on the match. There are certain preconditions. This is something that we will work now in the, in the, in the hall. First of all, we need the extremely good individual the, uh, uh, abilities. Because we are playing deep, we have to cover the large space. It's not easy. So we need a good stance. So we have to move good in stance. We have to do the sliding very good. We have to move also very good in the in the defense, and this is not the same. Moving in the stance and moving in the defense, not same. And you will see later on. We have to build up these players' mentality, competitors or warriors. We need also good tactical uh, education, anticipation, to anticipate what the... Uh, 
anticipation? Because with the good anticipation, we are very often in the position to uh, uh, to intercept the ball as well. Ponieważ to powoduje, że zajmujemy ta anticipacja, że bardzo często zajmujemy pozycję, pozycję, która jest. We need a high, high level of activity, so called controlled aggressiveness. Musimy wysoki poziom aktywności, inaczej kontrolowanej agresji. And we need also good, good communication, you saw from the video. And finally, it has to be very, very well trained. What we have noticed, and this is reality, this is not that we have to notice. Whatever we analyze that the senior team is doing on the World Championship, Cokolwiek analizujemy z zagrań, które seniorskie zespoły prezentują na mistrzostwach. When you go to the young age categories competition, you see that they are doing the same. Pójdziemy do młodszych kategorii, zobaczymy, że robią to samo. Because nothing happens over the night. This is technology process that takes time. Nic nie dzieje się przez noc. To jest proces, który potrzebuje czasu. So and when the junior player reaches the level to join the senior team. Jeżeli junior dołącza grup, do grupy seniorskiej, he is ready to be involved in the system. Jest gotowy, żeby go wdrożyć do systemu. But you have different ways, of course. There is no single path. Różne drogi, ale nie ma jednej ścieżki. So you are driving different cars. We have Mercedes Benz. We have BMW. Tak, my prowadzimy różne auta. Well, you can change if you like, yeah. And you have to change some spare parts. Yeah, spare parts. You have to put it. Both for Mercedes and BMW, there's good quality of the spare parts, yeah. But neither you can put Mercedes part in the BMW and opposite. You can't put it. Probably your wizards you can do. So, what about this flexible defense? This is reality. This is not future anymore. Is anybody else following basketball or only me here? Excellent. So in, we have this in basketball. We call it match-up defense. So one part of the defense is playing l uh, less, uh, less aggressive, and one part of defense is playing very, very aggressive, man to man. We have this. So individual defending is very, very important. We agreed. But what do you think? Because uh, we never could know that uh, we will play so much individual. Would we ever play man to man in the shooting zone like the basketball is doing? Now nobody dares do it because for you it's too risky. But from the other side, be honest. Are you really training individual system, the pressing man to man on your training sessions? As a system of the game, that you can use it successfully during different part of the games. No, mostly you are doing when you are losing the match in the dying seconds and you want to do something. But can you really do something if you didn't train it? If the basketball players are able to do it who are two meters tall, why handball players can't do it? If you have the basketball restriction, no contact. We have contact. We have restriction in basketball, five fouls. We can do as much fouls as you like. Range of movements much higher in basketball. They can run, they can run under the hoop. We, can, we can't run through the goalkeeping area. After shooting in basketball, nobody can obstruct anymore the, the trace of the ball. 
In, the, in handball, we have still the goalkeeper. So, one of the biggest problems of playing such individual game is in the field of psychology. How to convince the players that they can play wide, but that they are unbeatable. Oh, coach, I can't cover, it's too much space. No, he betrays immediately. You don't agree. No, that, this is another topic here. Yeah. Well, now we are speaking about uh, six against six. This is another topic here. Yeah. But I can tell you, I saw also one, one coach who was doing one thing, which is probably strange. When he was not playing seven six, he was playing seven against five. One player was on the center. And whenever they were scoring the goal, he was, he was throwing the ball immediately to the player on the center and he was scoring goals. You know how many times this uh, seven against six was taking probably three attacks and the coach said, okay, so y this is tactics, this is tactics. So what we have noticed in the development of individual skills. So First, the further development of the defensive stance, moving in the stance and moving in the defense. Further development. And now something is wrong. No, no, it's here but not moving here. Next, not something. It's moving here. Let's see, let's see. Okay, uh -huh. sorry. This is the... Okay. Okay, besides the parallel stance and the diagonal stance that you know very well and you are using it, We have three more stances. One is open, closed and semi-closed. And I won't speak a lot of, about this. We will show this in the hall. We have uh, different uh, individual strategies as well. So the same player using both stances, left and right, against the same player, we will speak there as well. <coughs> and also we have uh, two philosophy attacking the ball and attacking the player without the ball, so flexible defense. So now there is changing two or more players for the phase of defense, it's not so frequent anymore. First of all, because of the fast-paced uh, handball. Because whenever you have the teams in the world-class handball, the World Championships, Euro, they are playing two or more players, the other team immediately plays quick, uh, quick throw-off. This is the clear strategy. And what we were always willing as a, as, a, as a coach is to have the players who can be equally successful in attack and defense. Now we have more all-round players than it used to be in the past. We have some, sorry, we have some new individual elements of the game in defense. If you remember, most of you, when you were playing uh, the, the handball, when you were playing handball, offensive foul was more the, the, the mistake of the attack than provoked by the player in the defense. Uh, 
błędem atakującego niż dobrym działaniem obrońcy. Now you have the clear strategy of certain players that they are provoking it, they're positioning them in order to provoke the offensive foul. Teraz widzimy zawodników, którzy poprzez swoje ustawienie prowokują faul ofensywny. It is a technical, individual, technical element due to the improvement on the individual skills. Jest element tej gry indywidualnej, tak aby poprawić grę w defensywie. And it's a special tactical tool of some players. No jest to specjalne narzędzie do gry niektórych zawodników. Those who have excellent individual skills. Którzy mają doskonałe umiejętności obronne. Those who are good in reading the game of the attack. Predicting very well what the opponent will do, having good anticipation. And also this is characteristic of the smart players. Stupid, can't do this. Uh, let's see if now it will be played. Hey, yes, excellent. So you can see one of the examples, Montenegro in the defense. The player position number five. She's playing a little bit more deep. And you will see from the other angle, she clearly positioned for that. So there she is. Look how she moves and position herself. Yeah. From the other side, as this used to be now more and more present, you have a good number of the players who are not only doing this, they are faking it. And there is a clear instruction of, for the referees who are whistling on the world level class. So if the players in the attack, are, in the defense are faking it, immediately progressive punishment, yellow card, two minutes and so on. And one Serbian girl did get the two minutes. Oh no, no, this is the same. Look, this is the same. And you will see how she faked here. No contact, she was faking, yeah. Immediately two minutes. So this is the proof that this is now the attitude of the players. It's not any more consequence of the bad attack. So, and most important for you probably that I'm very close to the end. But I don't see your smile on your faces, huh? I have feeling that I'm at home and meeting my wife. She's not smiling, huh? So what is one part of your coaching business? You have to explore. Uh, you like when I'm speaking about my wife, huh? You like this. So you have to explore, but sometimes if you are exploring too much, it's risky. This is if you are exploring, probably you will become a visionary. You have a vision of the future of the handball, vision of the transformation of your players into the team. And if you read scientific papers, you will see that the players are believing the most to the coaches who have this visionary style. But as I told you, there is very, very tiny line in between being a visionary and being a fool. So, try to be a visionary if it is possible. Huh? But please do not become a fool. Huh? Uh, let's not make agreement not to meet in the psychiatric clinic because we became a fool, sir. So? Okay.
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for not having questions as well. And see you in the hall.